In the 1940s, he, uh, of course, like all illustrators, had to find another way to make a living because of photography. Therefore, he became a teacher. I remember on the Saturdays, my grandfather taught children. That was the children's day, and he had both studios full of children. I loved watching him go from easel to easel, encouraging each child. He said when he started to be a teacher that he did not want to create many little schoonovers. He wanted to create artists who found within themselves their artistic ability and what they wanted to portray on canvas. And it was absolutely exciting to see him go around and then he would regale the whole class with a story. If he saw someone was doing something, he would tell a story of his trip to the Hudson Bay area or Louisiana or interaction with the pirates and he embellished, I must say, uh, having this wonderful imagination. He loved to see their reaction. He could spin a good yarn, he certainly could. The way that I remember that is not so much by the stories because I was so young, I just don't remember any particular story that comes to mind. But what I remember is the kind of the general ambiance when he was telling a story. He had a very uh, uh, kind of a, a calm uh, voice, but incredible detail, a very whimsical sense of humor, um, and just a certain charisma that just kept people spellbound. I was very fortunate to spend time with him with my father here at the studio after college as uh, we held these Wednesday night soirees and he would come in as a, you know, this sort of resident artist, a raconteur and um, celebrity in his own right at age um, 85, 86, 87. And it was, those were wonderful days because we sort of celebrated his, uh, his whole life. And it was just a uh, kind of an open conversational atmosphere. People would uh, look at the memorabilia around the studio. They would look at paintings. Occasionally you could buy one. If uh, we had our druthers, we'd have bought a lot more back then. Because as, when people would ask him if a painting was for sale, he would say no. And they'd say, well, Frank, why isn't it for sale? And he'd say, well, I've already been paid for it. See? Everybody loved him. Um, when we had a, a gathering of his students a, a couple of years back, just the outpouring of uh, genuine love and respect and the memories people had for him, just, uh, I was totally blown away. It, it astounded me that, uh, and, you know, I shouldn't have been surprised, but, but I was just by the strength and the, and the depth of it. He was very active in town. He was not a reclusive artist at all. He was the president of the Lincoln Club. He was in the Whist Club. He was uh, very active in Emanuel Church as the senior warden for many years. One of the things that I remember as a child is going to Emanuel Church and sitting there because he had done 15 of the windows of Emanuel Church. He designed the windows either for families or because he designed them at, at, for a subject matter. They are still in Emanuel Church. He actually is involved in 17, but his are 15 of them. The Star of Bethlehem, so beautiful, placed in the church so that when the sun comes up, the star is lit, and the star is lit all day long. As I was growing up, I recognized that my grandfather was very well known in town. He was very well known in